Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. In this week's video I'm creating one of my all-time favorite pieces with pastel. I say it's my all-time favorite because this one has some meaning for me. It was the first piece I actually started realism with. I have created this one two times already, first off with colored pencils following a tutorial by Kirsty Partridge at the time, and this gave me an intro to realism and I fell in love right away. Then of course when I started with acrylics after some time I had to make this the first piece too, something about it just felt right. And so I started my acrylic realism journey with this one as well. But for some reason I've never created this one with pastels, so I thought I would change that this week. As you have seen by now, we're drawing a cheetah's face this week. An angry looking one that is. Is it wrong to think that he still looks cute even when he's angry? By now I've applied my colors for the underlayer where I want them to be, with soft pastel sticks that is. I'm going to use a soft tool that's double F by Pan Pastel to blend these out and mix them together a little where the different colors meet. This makes it so that I don't have any hard edges where the colors change and that it looks a little more natural. I first started off with all of the warm yellow and brown colors so that I could blend these out without having to worry that the black would mix in with these and make them a lot darker and muddier. After that I blocked in all of the black spots and stripes with a soft pastel, I blend those out with a soft tool as well. Keep in mind to blend the colors out in the direction of the fur already. This will help you with making it look more realistic. I left the eyes and the nose blank for now, since I want to fill these in with the pencils because of the extra care we have to take for these small areas. You could do this with a soft pastel sticks too, but I prefer a little more control in those areas so I use pencils instead. As the underlayer is all done, it's time to get the eyes started. These will help us judge all of our other values since they are the focal point of the piece, so it's really important to get these right. The color of the eye itself consists of three different colors. A brown for the darker shadowed parts, an orangey brown for the mid-tone and an ochre for the lightest parts. Now we'll still go on top of that with an ivory color for the highlights of course, but the highlight isn't really part of the eye color. And of course a black for the pupil along with a blue and purple color for the highlights. You can see that I start off with an underlayer in the eyes as well, put together with these three base colors I just mentioned. After this is blended out with our trusty blending stump, we will build up the layers by adding lighter colors on top. And by blending out after every layer that we get that natural feel. I also darkened up the edges some more to make it seem like the eye is set in a socket, just like in real life, where the socket casts some shadow over the edges of the eyeball. Only the last layer gets left pretty unblended, since we want this one to stand out a little from the rest. The last layer represents the stripes and dots in the iris that we all have, along with the highlights. And last but not least, I'm darkening the black around the eye so that I can make the eye fade into the black seamlessly. I use the Faber Castell Hard Black Pastel Stick for this. This is really the darkest black pastel stick I have ever found, so to me it's perfect. And one last thing to add around the eye is the highlight on the eyelid underneath the eyeball. This catches some reflection from the sky and therefore gets a little highlight. I add this in with a medium grey pencil and go over it lightly with a purple color to get some more color in there and make it pop. Now that the eye on the left is done, it's time to get in the fur around the eyes. For this I use a creamy yellow color to get in the base layer of the fur. The patch right above the eye is brighter than the rest of the fur on the face, so I used an ivory color to fill this in. I know I'm repeating myself here, but always make sure that you add in the fur marks in the direction that the fur is growing and switch up the length and curve of them. This will help to make it look realistic and natural. And make sure to look at your reference picture to know which way the fur is going in. After this base layer is done, it's time to get in the contrast and different tones. I use darker colors according to my reference to mimic the different layers of fur. For this I mostly use a warm brown and a grey color. The grey makes it look a little less saturated, which is what I'm going for here. For the lighter parts above his eye, you can see that on the reference picture there is some black fur underneath showing through. So make sure to add this in. Go on top with the lighter colors one more time if you feel like you've muddied up the colors too much. This way the lighter colors stand out again. 
onto the fur underneath his eye then, which is more or less the same process, only a little more grey is used here. So I start off with that creamy yellow first to get in the base layer again. Go on top of that with my brown pencil again to get a little more definition in there before going over that with the ivory color. This represents the top layer of fur that catches the most light. But since this side is a little more overshadowed, I'm going to add in more of that grey color to mute it all down. We can't forget to get in the patches of black fur by going over those with our black pencil and getting them to look like fur by dragging some lines out of them into the rest of the fur. And last but not least, we'll go on top of the black fur with a bluish grey pencil to get in the highlights on the black fur. Since the black fur also catches some light. And make sure not to add in too many of these marks to keep it looking natural. On to the bridge of the nose then, where we are going about it the same way again, just switching up some colors. On the bridge we're going to use darker colors for our base and go on top of those with lighter ones. I could have made my underlayer darker here, which would have been easier, but hey, this will work out too, it's just a little bit more work. I'm starting off by getting in all of the darker fur before repeating the same process again. I use the brown for this on the bridge and muzzle, except for the lighter part right next to the nose, there I have used a warm grey color. When all of these darker hairs are in place, I repeat the process we used on the left side. We start off with the creamy yellow to get in the base fur, go on top of that with the ivory and adjust the colors where needed with some grey and black. There is a lot more shadow cast on this part of the face because of the angry look, since the wrinkles on the bridge cast a shadow on the fur around them. Make sure to get these shadows in the right place as well, so you get the look of these wrinkles right. Otherwise it will look a little bit weird. When you're happy with the values and saturation, you can go on top one more time with the ivory and brightest colors to get in the highlights on the final layer. Now I'm not going to explain the right side of the bridge, as it is an exact repetition of the left part. Just look at your reference picture to see where you need to make subtle color changes. The next part that I will talk about in depth is the nose. If you love to draw animals, wildlife in particular, I have got a treat for you as well. If you sign up for my newsletter through the link in the description below, you will get my monthly newsletter with a little update on everything that I uploaded in the last month and get 4 pictures taken by me that you can use as references for your own art pieces. Sounds interesting? Click the link in the description before the end of the month to make sure that you get this month's reference pictures in your mailbox. So for the nose I start off with my black pastel stick by Faber Castell. This is the blackest one I have ever found so I'm loving it for this. I add this in on the areas where I want it to be really really black and blend it out, onto the areas that I didn't apply any as well, with a blending stump. After that it's time to start building up that nose by adding many layers on top of each other, starting with the first layer of definition with a bluish grey pencil. I'm adding this in wherever I see something more than plain black on my reference picture. Blending this out softly with my fingers before going over the little dots on the top with some black. I'm not going over all of them, just between some. This helps to make it look like those bumps they have on their nose, just like our dogs do. When this is done, I'm going to glaze some color over the top to make it look less boring and flat. Adding some blue and purple gives the nose a more interesting look, and it still looks very natural if you don't push it too much. After you're done glazing your colors, blend them out just a little with your fingers or a blending stump to make them a little less saturated. Then we're going to repeat the process of adding the definition again by going over the highlighted parts again with our bluish grey color and a very light grey one on top of that. The light grey color is only used in the areas that look very wet or have a lot of reflection. So don't use too much of this or you will make the depth that we've created so far fade to nothing again. The right side of the face is exactly the same as the left side that we've completed already, so I'm not going to go in depth on this side. All I want to say, or repeat again, is always look at your reference picture to see where you have to change up the colors, add more grey, brown, ivory and so on. The only way to make realistic animal portraits is by looking at the animal for a long time. And since we don't want to have a cheetah in our home, or at least I don't, the only way that we can do this is by looking at a picture or video of them. That's why I'm always stressing the importance of a reference picture. 
No matter how well you think you know an animal, you'll never know all of the curves or places where the fur changes direction and so on. Okay, my rant about reference pictures is over now. The only thing left to do when all of the fur and the right eye are drawn in is going over your final piece one more time to see if you need to adjust some things and add in some highlights or shadows that you might have missed and be proud of yourself for completing it. As for me, I forgot to film the adding in of the whiskers, so I'll insert a picture here of the end result and this way you can see him with some proper whiskers and all finished up. I hope you like him or her and tell me what animal you would like to see in the future. Let me know in the comments below so that I can put it on my list of things to draw this year. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up and I also have a lot of other videos on my channel that might interest you. So definitely check them out. Next Friday I'll be back with another video, see you then and in the meantime I hope you have a great week.